All right, folks, so it looks like ContraPoints has left Twitter for good. Now, if you don't know what happened and what I'm going to do in this video is basically take you the whole process of kind of what went down, essentially. And basically, what ended up happening was she had uh, sent out this tweet thread uh, in which she had basically explained that uh, it was tough for her being in, quote, hyperwoke spaces because they would go around asking what the pronouns are. Um, and so she didn't really like that, or it was just like kind of an inconvenience to her, I guess. It wasn't really, it was uncomfortable for her. And, uh, non-binary, the non-binary, uh, you know, group, people really were not happy about that. They really went off, and there was sort of, there's sort of this, I guess, I don't know, I don't know, just sort of clash, if you will, that's going on, I guess, in, in that this sort of community, in the trans community, where there's now... Uh, non-binary people are also sort of now having their situation so that's kind of what's been going on and so essentially she got a bunch of backlash for her comments she deactivated her twitter account and she has now left uh twitter for her twitter forever so we'll be looking at this first i want to let you guys know i'm over on patreon that's patreon.com slash the progressive voice make sure to go join up if you want access to a bunch of premium content just posted a video over there um, on Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro. You definitely don't want to miss on that. Got some Nico House content, Sam Harris, you know, uh, David Pakman, etc., etc. Make sure to go over there and check that out. Again, it's patreon.com slash Voice. With that said, let's go ahead and get into this. So um, this is a message left. This is the final message left by ContraPoints over on Twitter. She put this message out. It says, Hi all, I deactivated my Twitter last week intending to take a longer break than this, but since commentators, journalists, etc. have begun using my absence and silence as an opportunity to speak for me, I feel like I have to say something. My discomfort with gender-neutral language and explaining my pronouns does not outweigh the need of other trans, non-binary, and gender non-conforming people. I regret expressing my feelings in a glib way that did not convey the importance of those needs. It saddens me that this mistake has been exploited by other public figures to go after non-binary people. Thank you to those of you who have criticized me in a measured and constructive way. I will try to do better. I have decided that Twitter is not a good platform for me, and I have turned this account over to my assistant, Gwen, who will manage it from now on to see you on YouTube and IG. So it looks like that is the final message from ContraPoints over on Twitter. It looks like she's gone. Now, I have to say, I would imagine that there's certainly a possibility she comes back at some point, maybe after a while. Maybe after she takes a longer break, it's certainly possible that she will return to Twitter. I see that that could definitely be an opportunity there. But I'm not really sure how I feel about having someone else tweeting from the Twitter account. I don't like that. It would be one thing if it was somebody who's just posting uh, things that promote the channel, right? But when you're, like, posting from someone else, uh, you know, you have basically, I guess, I don't know if it's her employee or something or what, but uh, basically she's basically got someone who's working who's doing that. So I, I don't really uh, like that concept. I mean, if, if it was just posting the sort of social media links, I get that. But posting from someone else's account is kind of weird. Uh, but basically, what she was referenced there, in referencing there, in which she was saying that you know other people were starting to speak in her silence, there was actually a lot of right wingers who were utilizing and sort of co-opting this and using it themselves to basically push uh, their nonsense. One of these guys is Ian Miles Cheong. He is a the ultimate right wing hack. He's a liar. He's a fraud. He's a smear merchant. Uh, all of those kinds of things to the T, to the max. He's a horrible person. And he sent out this tweet saying, The cancel culture brigade just came for contra points for holding transphobic opinions about non-binary they slash them people. She deleted her Twitter account following outrage over these tweets. So, it, you know, it's just kind of odd, you know, to see these kinds of tweets. For me, it's really weird. She says, He says, I agree with contra points. She said nothing wrong here. Trans trenders... Who want unique pronouns and to stick it to daddy just to make it very difficult for transgender people who do their damnness to pass to be socially accepted because they're seen as trend hoppers and clout chasers. 
This is weird to me because, as you guys know, the right wing is extremely anti-trans. And so to see the right wing defending a trans person against non-binary people is weird. It's almost like they turned, like their previous enemy was trans people and they hated trans people, which they still do. And now they flipped it to hating non-binary people. And so it's like almost kind of like the, I don't know if it's uh, the enemy of my enemy is my friend type of thing. I don't know. But, uh, I don't know, it just seems kind of odd to me, to be honest with you. But, so, basically, again, this guy is a he's just a massive a fraud and a liar and a hack. And to read you the tweets here of uh, ContraPoints, she said, I'm friends with a lot of Gen Z trans people, and I'm often grouped in with them because I'm very online and transitioned not that long ago, but my experience is very different. I'm not a Vanguard Zoomer tran. I sometimes feel like the last of the old school transsexuals. But now you go into these leftist Discord slash Facebook groups, like 20 to 30% identify some flavor of trans. Most of them are not conventional binary transsexuals. That seems to be the future. But I also understand why a lot of trans people who just want to blend in are frustrated with the new visibility and with the rads. I'm feeling fearful myself about the future of trans acceptance, and I understand the desire to be invisible, tolerated, safe. So that did not uh, go down so well, I guess. And the a very original tweet, okay, the sort of tweet thread that was made by uh, Natalie that really got people really pissed off was a tweet where she was responding to someone who said, "Sometimes it's funny when you're only you're the only trans person in this space where everyone is announcing their pronouns. Like it gets to you and a hush falls over the room, and you can just like check your phone." Because only cis people need to be working on their pronouns game. Natalie responded to this saying, This has happened to me before in hyperwoke spaces. Like it's me and a bunch of cis women and we all have to go in a circle saying she slash her because I'm there. There's this paradox where I can go to a sports bar in North Carolina and be miss slash mammed all night, no question. But in self-consciously trans-inclusive spaces, I have to explain my pronouns and watch woke people awkwardly correct themselves Every time they say you guys, I guess it's good for people who use they slash them only and want only gender neutral language, but it comes at the minor expense of semi passable trans is like me. And that's super hard for us. So a lot of people, you know, that a lot of people really got mad at that final third tweet that she had sent out because basically they were saying that, you know, she also seems to be doing a hint of uh, seems to be sarcastic to me. Because the super hard for us type of thing, I don't see how that would really be very hard for you. I would imagine, I guess it could be an inconvenience, but I really highly doubt it's super hard. So I think it was I think it was a hint of sarcasm there. But people got really angry because they were basically saying, Oh, you're basically uh, now a pa- you consider yourself a passable trans, and so you're sort of throwing non-binary people to the wayside. And you can see how that tweet has 213 replies. People are really getting angry about that. Um, and so this was sort of originally the the original tweet that had really gotten people in a fear. Now, she had actually responded to that tweet with a clarification where she says, Y'all who are mad about this thread, I'm not saying we shouldn't have a norm of disclosing pronouns in transpositive spaces. And I'm happy to give up having my gender assumed to help and be slash non-passing trans people. But why can't I at least acknowledge this hurts more than helps me? Not all trans people have the same needs, and some of the rules that trans people have taught woke cis people to follow lead to me be being misgendered, they, and interrogated about my gender more often. Why can't I point that out? Can't a trans vent on Twitter.com? So that that is essentially the uh, beginning. Those are all the tweets that we just went through. Those were all the tweets and sort of, you know, uh, the previous tweet, the hyper woke spaces tweet came first, and this one, of course... And then I believe it was the other thread that I just read, read you that were the screenshots from Ian e and Miles Cheong. So basically what you're looking at here is uh, people got really angry about this. There was a lot of backlash towards uh, Contra. And she ended up deactivating her Twitter account. And, you know, she came back a couple weeks later. I believe like one to two weeks later or something like that it was in terms of time. And she left this message left this message there uh this is the message that was left here so she has left twitter for good again i would say that there's certainly a possibility that she comes back just because of the fact that simply um 
you know, I think that there's nothing that would prevent her from coming back as well as I think she just needs, I think she just needs a break from uh, being on Twitter and for her, I guess, not a good platform because not a good way to get out uh, what she wants to say in a, in a sort of uh, convenient way, in a way that, uh, that basically explains what she's trying to say in a good manner. So she has left Twitter. So I wonder your guys' thoughts on this down below. Definitely know, let me know what you guys think about this.